and out of all the things we've ever seen, some things seem to be more real than others. They feel more real. They reach deep inward and imprint themselves on our being. Some of those things grip you by the throat and thrash you into the ground. Some other things lift you like a gentle wind. Some things flatten you like a hammer. Some things make you cry. Some give you hope and fill you with strength. Perhaps these things are what for we live. They are what for we strive and what for we pursue and then why we don't give up. Why we pick ourselves up despite everything going wrong. We use courage in the face of the cold, harsh wind of life. The human spirit can withstand life. And what strength does that entail? Are there things more harrowing and crushing than life? But yet, in the face of that never-ending harshness, in the face of unbearable pain, in the face of the possibility of the unknown swallowing us whole, we still dare to live. We love and find each other. We give ourselves to one another. We are aware of life, of our finite, vulnerable nature. Yet, we do not falter and crumble in the weight of that knowledge. Inside each of us, there is a strength that can withstand the universe. A fire resilient enough to turn an entire world into ash. Yet, we seem to be blind to our own strength. We are tragically unaware of what lays within ourselves. Of the unfathomable sturdiness it takes to face life daily in a self-aware state. That does not mean that there are not many for whom the harshness hasn't in big part destroyed their spirit. They lay in the cold streets. They cannot pay the hospital bills of an ill son, and they are crushed by those in power in the game of injustice. They have starved to death in cold long past winters, and died by a sword, by an axe, by a bullet, in long forgotten aimless wars. So, if one dared ask, what is real? Does anything else matter but these things? Is there anything more real than what we live for? These seemingly very futile human things, are they not real? If they are not, then our actions aren't either. They guide our every action, emotion, decision. They create your perception. They shape your reality. Yet, in the grand scheme of things, what value does any of that truly have? We're just another animal out of a billion others. Sure, we're smart, but so what? Does the universe also cook you or something? Some kind of special treatment because you score 70 points higher on IQ tests than chips. A creature so dumb it hasn't even figured out base level calculus yet. Is that our argument? to make the case of our importance to the universe. You pursue sensorial finite things that give you temporary pleasure. You place the entire value and worth of your being into pursuing and valuing things that will increase the chances of your genetic makeup being inherited. Family, achievement, money, love, beauty, social status, power. They are only slightly less overt manifestations that the game of evolution plays through us. What other argument should we use to justify our importance then? Ah yes, we have managed to beat all other species on our planet in the domination game. We have built roads and buildings and cities, even bigger cities, bundled together to form nations. We managed to not murder one another. Not all the time, at least. I mean, we do use laws that punish us harshly to repress some of our primal tendency. And... Weapons. Big, fucking, giant, monstrously destructive weapons to threaten other groups and nations that do not share our ethnicities, our genes, into not killing us. That is how we manage to not annihilate ourselves into extinction. We are the apex predator of a tiny speck of dust fly through a sea of specks of dust that forms something slightly bigger that holds all that dust kind of together, but not really. 
which then is only one of another innumerable amount of clustered specks of dust, which expand in all directions for infinity. Jesus, how the fuck did we manage to ever entertain the thought of having any sort of importance? Kind of starting to run out of arguments here. Wait, there is still a small little detail left that I think we can use. We can see, right? We're aware, we're conscious of the world, of ourselves. I know that there is something typing these words on this screen right now. I know what his emotions and thoughts are at this moment. That is the only true thing, or the truest thing, in a sense. I cannot say that I, as an individual, distinct, special, separate person exists. We already know the ego is an illusion that the mind creates. It is merely the unintended consequence of the instinct to survive. And that is what you and I think of ourselves, as when we think about ourselves. You are constantly hallucinating yourself. And we also have no proof that anything beyond experience exists. Physical reality and matter could only be an illusion. If I told you to break down the world to its most tiniest building blocks, and if you've taken a class or two of physics, you'd know that everything is made up of atoms, protons, electrons. Our current understanding of physics tells us that those building blocks actually truly existing as tangible physical entities is shaky at best. We cannot truly prove the existence of anything beyond our conscious awareness. Perhaps I'm typing frantically on a keyboard that isn't there, looking at a screen that isn't there, directing my words to people that aren't there. Do you truly exist? Are you truly hearing this right now? Have you tried asking yourself? How is this not just the sensorial illusion of your mind, of mine? We know your sense of self and free will both are illusions. So why are you so certain you're actually watching and hearing this right now? Perhaps I'm you speaking to you, trying to show you, to prove to you, to wake you up. Wake up! Sorry about that. And so, the realest only true thing that we can be sure of is human experience. It is the norm through which what is real should be judged by. Because even without an I and a you and physical reality itself, experience still remains. Or at least, mine does. <laughs>